Hi, I'm Aaron Runk, and today we're going to be doing a setup on the Morisiki SL200. First thing I'm going to do is I have turned on the power in the back of my machine, and I have pushed my on button. Once my machine comes up, it will come up with a, a warning screen, and it will tell me to hit OK. Once I hit OK, it will then give me a prompt to go to open the door and then close it. If you'll notice, my light is on, allowing me to open up my door because it is unlocked. I will simply open it and close it. To make sure I can see everything going on inside the machine, I will then push my light. This will allow my light to come on inside the machine, give me something to work with. First thing I have to do on this machine is I have to take it out of home position and then send it back home. To do this, I will go into my hand jog, I will come up to my 100,000 increments, and I will start with Z mode. So I will go into Z, and I will go in the negative direction towards my chuck. I only need to go, I'll hit my all so I can see all of my coordinates. I only need to go about four inches in my machine in both X and Z. So I will switch back over to X, and I'll go also in the negative direction, about three to four inches. Once I'm in this position, I will go back to my zero return. I will push the soft key. And if you'll notice, to tell if you're in the mode, there is a light on each key. So I will increase my rapid override to 100%. So that way, when I send it home, I'm not going to be here all day waiting to get home. I will come to my axis directions and I will hit the X plus. Notice how it doesn't say plus or negative, but if you're looking inside the machine, plus goes away from the spindle, just like Z goes away from the spindle. So I will push and hold my plus value. Once I am there, you'll notice that my machine location is zero. And if I come down here to my machine status, the X light has also lit up, telling me that I am at my home location. I'm gonna do the same thing for the Z. So I will just simply push and hold my Z plot positive direction. Okay. Once I am in my locations, I am good to go ahead and load my program. To load our program, I need to be in the edit mode. I'll push edit and my light shows that I am in the edit mode. I will come over to my keys and I will hit my program key. This will put me into my program mode to where I can find my F input and my F output functions. These are my soft keys. These are going to take me to additional menus. I want to go to operation. I will hit my positive to cursor over. And if you notice, I have a read and a punch. I want to read from my USB slash computer into my machine. So if I come down here to my panel, you notice that I am in panel edit, not on, not off. I'm in panel edit. This will allow me to input and output successfully. So I come back up to here and I'll push read, execute. At this point in time, the LSK for reading button or signal is on. So if you look down here, I have an RS-232 port is connected. If this is not connected, this will alarm out. So with this connected and that connected, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to show you my computer. I have my USB, I will plug in my USB. Once my USB comes on, I have Simco Edit, which is on the desktop for this computer. I will come over to Editor tab. Underneath Editor tab, let's close this out. Underneath Editor tab is Open. I will open, I will go to All Files on my USB stick. On this program, I'm going to be using O2000. If you notice, it is a file format. There's no .txt that is necessary. I will come over and open. This will show me the program that I want to use. I can see this is the program I want to use. I will then come back up to the top of my tabs. I will go to transmission. This is the tab that we will be using to send from the computer to the machine. I can see on here that this is the machine I want, or the program I want to send to the machine. 
I will highlight send and I will click send. This shows that everything is going into the machine, shows that it is successful. We'll come back to our screen. If you notice, my program was 02345 CNC turning one. This is the correct program that was loaded. Next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going into our handle mode so that we can load and set our tools. So in handle, I'm going to open up my door by pushing the door unlock button. From here, I also want to hit my normal release key. This will allow me to move my machine with the door open so that I can set my tools. So we will open up our door. And if you'll notice down here in the corner is the tool eye arm mounting position. What I will do is I will simply undo the lever and drop this down. From here, I'm gonna to go to the side of my machine and I'm gonna get my tool eye. Notice that when I get my tool eye, I will be using two hands the entire time. Now on here, there's a little red dot. That dot is how we're going to orientate our tool eye. It will only fit one way. So let's go over here. And if you'll notice, my red dot lines up with the lever, okay? Once I'm there holding pressure that way, I will lock this into position. You'll notice that's exactly where I want it to be. So back to our control panel. I have to activate the tool eye. It is loaded, but it does not know that it is there until I go to PSM. I will push this, and if you'll notice, my light comes on and if you look at my screen, the offset is lit up. Also, whatever tool is active in my carousel, in this case, tool one is active in my carousel, this is what's highlighted. Now these are old numbers, so what I will do is get rid of these. This one right here, I might not be able to get rid of at the moment. So, okay, so I got rid of it. Now I'm going to touch off in my X axis and my Z axis. So while still in handle, I will increase my increments to a higher, a higher movement so I can get there faster. I will go on my Z axis towards my tool eye. I will change into my X axis and I will come towards it again. I want to center on the tool eye as best I can. So now that I am close to the eye, I want to reduce my increments a little bit lower and I'm going to start handling down into it. Now that I'm really close to it, I'm going to go into my slowest increments. I'm going to go into the thousandths increments and then I'm going to come up back up to my screen and I'm going to start handling down towards my tool eye in the negative direction. Once my tool eye makes contact, as you can see, my numbers have changed. If you look inside the machine, you will see that I have made contact with the eye and I am still going in the negative direction. Now, what you'll run into is if I was to be in the hundred thousandths or 10,000 increments, this number would not be as accurate because it will be going into the tool eye with more pressure. Now that I have set my X, let's go ahead and set my Z. So I will go into a bigger increments. I don't need to go into my hundred thousandths because I might go the wrong way and break my tool eye. I know I want to go in the X axis away from the middle of the turret, which will be a positive direction. Once I'm safely above it, I will position my tool in front of the tool eye. Again, I am centering on the tool eye. I will come in and Z. Once I am close to the tool I and Z, I will come back down to my thousands increments and I will start handling towards the tool I. As you can see on the screen, my tool I has now been set for this tool in the X and Z locations. You can repeat this process for every tool in your turret that you're using in your program. However, before you index into my tool I and break it, I need you to move away from the tool eye. When I say move away from the tool eye, I want you to send this all the way back home. 
If you have any tools that look as if though they may hit the tool eye, remove the tool eye and then turn the tool and then load it back in here. In this example, I know that none of my tools will hit. So I will come back to my screen and I will activate tool three. Once tool three is blinking, I will push the index turret button. From here, I can do the same thing. I can come over and touch my X and my Z. Once I have done this tool and I am done with my tool eye, because all my tools have been set, I will come back to my screen and I will turn off the tool eye. Once the tool eye is off, my offset blinking function is off. I know that tool one has been set in my X and Z. Now that I'm done with my tool eye, I will come back and I will put it back up. Keeping one hand on it, I will release it and then I will put it back into its holder. It fits into a compressed compartment and snaps right in. And it snaps on there. So coming back to our machine, we are now going to set our G54 work offset in our Z axis. To do this, we will need the tool or a tool that we have set off our tool I. In this case, it will be tool one. So I'm going to close my door. I will turn my key back to normal. I want to go into my MDI. So go into my MDI. I will have to put my lid, I'm sorry, I will have to put my lid back for the tool eye. Simply putting it on there and locking it in. So I will go to program in MDI. I will type in the tool that I use to set my tool length. I will type in T101. What this does is it calls up tool one, the two, the zero one after it calls up the geometry of that tool. So there is no M6 for using it on the lathes. I will type in the block, insert, and I will hit cycle start. What will happen is tool one will turn it into position, which you will see here, and then my offsets will be reading, which will show right here next to this T. So I will hit cycle start. I have tool one, it is reading the geometry for that tool. I also have tool one in my turret. At this point in time, I'm going to come up and I'm going to take a small facing pass on my material. So to do this, I will put my key back into release and I will open my door. At this point in time, I want to turn on my spindle to about 500 RPMs using my normal on. To do this, I have to be in a manual mode and I will hit normal on. You notice I'm only turning at 1%. If I look at my screen, you will see an actual speed. So as I increase this using the plus button, I want to be turning around 500 RPMs for steel, about 800 RPMs for aluminum. So I'm now turning good speed. Tool one is active. I will handle towards the face of the tool, the part, and take a very light, about a 10 thousandths, facing pass on the material. I will come into my material until I touch it. I will come up. But now that I've come over, I will slowly come down until I face the top of my tool. Notice that when doing this, I will not move my machine in the Z axis. I am only moving in the X axis. While in this position, I will go ahead and stop my spindle by hitting the stop button, not reset. I will come back to my offsets over here and I will go to my work offsets because I want to tell the machine where the face of this part is in relation to the tool eye. Okay. Now that I am in my offset screen, I'm going to go to my work offsets and I'm going to highlight whatever offset my program is using. In this case, I will be using G54. On the X value, that will not be used because I am 
zero to the center of the spin. The only time an X will be used is on the tool geometry page. However, I do need to know the distance from the tool I to the face of my part, which is my G54Z work coordinates. From this position, I will hit Z, zero, and then I will push my soft key measure. This is telling me how far I am from my tool I to the face of my part. Now, if you wanna see if you had set this correctly, the way you would do that is you would add six inches, 42 thousandths, along with seven inches, 900 thousandths, so it's about 14. So if I come over to my machine page, there it is. I'm about 14 inches, six thousandths and eight tenths away from the machine home location. With those two numbers added together, equaling this machine location, I know that I have set this correctly. If you do Z0 measure in your work offsets and you get 14 inches, you're gonna be going in 14 inches plus an additional eight, which will go through the back of your machine and it is not what you wanna do. Now that this is set, I will close my door and I will send the machine home. I'll turn this back to normal. I'll go to Z0 return and I will go in my X A and Z axes. You only need to do that G54 set with one tool one time. Once all my tools are set, I can come over here. I can set my tool nose radius compensation to whatever the radius is on the tool of the, the nose of the tool. Plus my three will tell me what quadrant that tool is at. What I mean by quadrant is I have four corners of a quadrant and I want to be coming in on this side, which is the face of my part and the outside of my part. If I was doing boring, I would still want to be on the face of my part, but I want to be coming in at this angle. You'd have to look up in your books as to what tool tip direction that is. Now that I am set up, and I'm ready to run my parts. Once I have ran my parts and I know I have a good program, now I want to take my program from the controller and put it back into my computer. To do this, I need to have my computer ready to read. So from here, I'm going to receive from my compute, from my machine. Now it is in the receive status. So whatever I send is what will go in here. I will come back to my computer screen. I will go into the edit function or edit mode. And then I will come back to my program and I can now go into my operation soft key. My operation soft key will take me to a new list of commands. I will cursor over to the punch option. Again, make sure your key on the panel is on edit, allowing you to send and receive programs. I will hit the punch function and execute. As you can see, I am now outputting. If I look at my screen, you will see that it has successfully outputted to this terminal. Transfer complete successful. So I will hit OK. It is the same program, but if you'll notice, that's the program I sent to the machine that's the program I just received from the machine. If you need to, before you send a machine uh, program from the machine to the controller, you can change a number by one variable to make sure that everything is correct. Once you have done that, everything is done. And that's how you do a setup on a Morisiki SL200.